In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can build your own VR multiplayer game. And due to popular demand from you guys, we will do so using Unity Netcode for Game Object. Now, Unity Netcode is part of Unity Gaming Services, which I'm super proud to say is the sponsor of this video. Now, Unity Gaming Services is a set of tools made by Unity to make our life as developer much easier. So if you'd like to know more about Unity Gaming Services, I will leave a link in the description below. And with it, at the end of this video, we will be able to connect multiple players together and see each other's avatar with synchronized position and hand animation. But enough chit chat, cause we have a multiplayer game to build, so let's get started! Okay, so here we are in a new Unity project. As you can see, I have the simplest VR setup ever with this XR origin and end presents under the left and right hand. Now, let's see how we can turn this simple project into a multiplayer VR game. And the first thing that we want to do is download netcode for game object. So for this, let's go to Windows, Package Manager, then here on Unity Registry, let's search for netcode. There it is, the netcode for game object. We can then click on install. Beautiful, it is now downloaded. We can close here the package manager. And the first thing that we want to do now with netcode is to create the network manager, which as the name suggests, is able to manage the network. So for this, let's right click, go to create empty, rename this network manager. We can reset the transform by clicking on the three little dot reset. And then let's click on add component and search for the network manager script. Now, as you can see, we have a warning here asking us to select a certain transport. So if we click on Select Transport and then on Unity Transport, as you can see, this has added by default this Unity Transport component. And now that is it for doing a simple connection because as you can see, there is a start o, start server and start client button that we can use here to debug and connect with some other instance of our game. But to test our game, I'm going to create a very simple player prefab. For this, I'm going to right click in the hierarchy, go to create empty and call this one network player. Beautiful. We can recenter its position. For now, let's keep it simple and just leave this a plain empty game object. But now, as you can see, there is a player prefab inside our network manager. And basically what this does is instantiate a player prefab when a player is connected. So to turn this network player game object into a prefab, we simply need to drag it here in the project windows. And as you can see, it is now safe in the project files. We don't need here the network player in the R key anymore. So let's simply press on the delete key. And then on the network manager, let's drag our network player over there. There you go. Now, as you can see, if I click on play, the start host and start client are highlighted. So let's click on the start host. And as you can see, we now have an error showing in the console, which say that the player prefab network player has no network object assigned to it. So let me just close these windows, leave play mode. And to fix this, we simply need to go on our network player, add component and add a network object. There you go. Now, what is a network object? For any behavior to be synchronized over the network, it must be owned by someone, right? So this owner will be able to control the object and then share it to the other player. This way, this will prevent any conflict. So this is the purpose of the network object to say which is the owner of this object. Anyway, now let's click on play again. Go back to the network manager and click on start host. And as you can see, this has correctly spawned a network player, which means that we are now connected in the game as a host. But of course, we want to test our game with multiple instances to see if we can now join as a client and be able to spawn not one, but two network player. So to do this, I'm going to build here the game to have two instance running of the game inside the same computer and be able to easily test it. But the issue right now is that the connection only occurs here by clicking on this little start host and start client button. So what I'm going to do is simply create a very simple UI just to debug the connection. So what we can do is simply right click, go to UI, button, text mesh pro, there you go. If we double click on it and press on 2D, we can see this big button over there. So in my case, what I want is to place it on the upper left corner by clicking here. And we can maybe now just move it right there. Now I'm going to go under its text and rename this text create. 
we can then now go back to button and press on Ctrl D to duplicate this button and place it right under. Now for this second button, I'm going to rename it, not create, but joint. And now our goal will be to simply connect by clicking on the create or join button for now. So for this, let's go back to our network manager. I'm going to minimize these two windows and add a new component called network connect. Beautiful. So the script will be very simple. At the top, we simply need to add using unity.netcode and add two functions, a public void create and a public void join. Now to create, we simply need to do network manager singleton dot start host to start as a host and to join a game that was already started by a host, we simply need to do network manager dot singleton dot start client. Beautiful. Now let's go back to Unity. Wait for our script to compile. There we go. Now I'm going to go on our create button, click on the plus button over there and drag our network manager, then go to network connect and then on create. We can then copy this event, go to the second button and paste it. But in this case, we don't want to connect. We of course want to network connect joint. Beautiful. Now everything is done. As you can see, if we click on play, it is the same as earlier. If I click on create, as you can see, if we go to the network manager, we successfully managed to connect as a host. Now let's try to build our game to see if we can connect with multiple instances of our game as a host, but also as a client. So for this, let's go to File, Build Settings, and here make sure that the platform is selected to Windows, Mac, Linux, and that you have this current scene in the scene in Build, but also to more easily be able to test the two instances of our game. What I'm going to do is go to Player Settings, Players, and then here on resolution, set the full screen mode to not full screen, but to windows. And then down below, enable resizable window. There we go. We can now close these windows and let's click on build and run to test our game. Okay, and there you go. As you can see, it works. We have now successfully to build here our game. And if I click on play on this side, if I start as a host, as you can see, it still work with the network player. And now if I try to join on this side, as you can see, it works because we now have two network player, one for each player currently connected to our game. Now, little side note, there is also an amazing tool called Parallel Sync that is able to duplicate the whole Unity Inspector, which can allow you to test your game without having to build it every time. So if some people are interested about this, I will leave its link in the description below. But for the scope of this tutorial, we will keep it simple and simply test our game by building it every time. Now, anyway, at this stage, we can handle a very simple connection but of course, for now, the network player is just an empty game object. So our goal will be to update this network player to make it work with our VR rig and let the player see each other by synchronizing the hands and head position as well as the hands animation. So let's see how we can do this. Okay, so to improve our network player, let's first drag it from the project windows to the hierarchy over there. And so my goal by now is to update this network player with the same hierarchy as the XR origin. So first we can right click and create an empty game object called head. We can duplicate this empty game object, but rename it left hand. And finally do it one more time with the right hand. There you go. So what we want is to have end presence under the left end and the right end of our network player for the other player joining our game. And so this left end model is actually something that I mean in my tutorial series on how to make a VR game. So if you don't know how to make it, go watch this video that I will leave in the description below. Now, anyway, in my case, I have the prefab for the left end model that is located under the Oculus end folders prefab and there it is. I can simply drag the left end model under the left end as well and do the same for the right end model. Now I think it would be nice to also have a head model for the network player joining our game and before starting this tutorial I've actually modeled a little head over there which is looking really nice. So I'm going to simply drag it under the head over there and there it is, we can see it here. And lucky for you, I will gift this little model in the description file below so that you can download it and use it for any of your VR project. Anyway, now that we have a model for the head, for our left hand and for our right hand, the goal is to update the head, the left hand and the right hand game object to follow the XR origin of the player that is connected. Now to do so, I'm going to go on the XR origin, click on add component and add 
of VR rig references. Now, the code of this component is to easily find the references on our XR origin, which is, if we create a component for each one, a public transform root, a public transform head, public transform left hand, and a public transform right hand. There you go. Now, we don't want a start or an update function, but what we want is actually a public singleton. So to make a singleton, we can do public static VR rig reference singleton and initialize this singleton in the awake function by doing singleton equals this. Now, by making this singleton, we will be able to easily access this component at any time. And this is what we will need for updating the position on our VR network player. Now, anyway, let's save and go back to Unity. We can set the XR origin to be the root. For the head, we can drag here on main camera. For the left end, the left end. And for the right end, the right end. Finally, let's use this VR rig reference on our network player to update the head, the left end, and the right end game object over there. So for this, let's click on add component and create a new script called network player. Beautiful. As we did for the VR rig reference, we can create a public transform reference to the root, then to the head, the left end, and the right end. And in the update function, we can simply update the position and rotation of all of these transform using the VR rig references. So for this, let's do root.position equals VR rig references dot singleton dot root dot position. Now let's copy and paste this. And instead of the position, we want it to be the rotation. There you go. Now let's copy this again, but this time do it for the head. And let's do this two more time, but this time for the left and right hand. Beautiful, but there is only one issue with the current setup, which is, of course, right now, when each player have their network player spawned, the position and rotation of all the body parts of this network player will be updated by only one person, which is not what we want. We, of course, want this network player to be updated only by its owner, which is the player that is connected. And to be able to know if we are the owner or not, it is really simple. We can simply do at the top using unity.netcode. And because we have a network object that is located on this network player, we can override not mono behavior here, but the network behavior. Beautiful. And now in the update, we can check that if we are the owner, only in that case, we can make the network player follow our local XR origin references. Beautiful. Now let's go back to Unity. Perfect. We can drag here the network player for the root, the head parent for the head, the left hand for the left hand, and the right hand for the right hand. Now, finally, to apply these changes, we can click on override and then on apply. And then let's select our network player and delete it as it will be spawned when we are connected to the network. Okay, and here you go. And now if we click on play, as you can see, currently there is no network player that is spawned. But if we click on create, as you can see, it is working. We can now see here our head and our left end. But as you can see, there is a little issue, which is that we have two same hands that are appearing for one player. We have the one that was initially on the XR origin, and we have here the same that are located under the left end on our network player. So let's see how we can actually disable one of the two ends. And to do so, we can, of course, use the ownership again on our network player. So let's go back to our script. And I'm going to create a public renderer array called mesh to disable. And then at the start of the game, we can do for each and Bruce on all of our mesh to disable and do item.enable equal false. And we can, of course, do this only if we are the owner. This way, in this case of the local network player, we will only have one set of n showing at a time. So if you are doing anything when a network behavior is spawning, the best thing is to do it here on network spawn function that we can override. So instead of doing this, let's copy and paste it over there and simply remove our start function. This way, this will make sure that we are first connected to the network before we are actually trying to do any network behavior, which is not the case in the start function. Okay, now let's go back to our network player and I'm going to double click on it here to open it in prefab editing. 
And for the mesh to disable, let's drag our head model over there, and as well as the hands renderer that is located here. Now let's do the same for the right hand with here the hands are hand and beautiful. Now if we go back here and click on play, as you can see, if I join as a host, it is working. The head model is disabled for the local player, as you can see over there. But now let's see how this works when two players are connected together. Okay, so as you can see, I have two network players that are connected here. But the issue is that even if I move on one instance of my game, it is not synchronized over the network. And this is because, of course, we can move the network player that is spawned locally, but we are not sharing to the other players the update that we are applying to it. And so to do this, we need to go to our network players and select all of the body parts that we want to be synchronized. So in my case, the root, the head, the left end, and the right end. Let's click on add component and add a network transform. Now, as you can see, the network transform is responsible to synchronize the position of a game object over the network. And here you can choose to synchronize the position, the rotation and the scale as well. Now, in the case of this project, we don't want to synchronize the scale. So let's simply disable this. And there you go. Now let's press on Ctrl S to save and go back. OK, so as you can see, it seems to work. When I move on the left eyes, it is seen by the client. But there is a big issue. If I go to the other instance of my game, as you can see, it does not seem to work. All the network avatar body parts stays at the ground. So the synchronization is not applying over the network. And the reason is that if we go to our network player and have a look at the network transform, this network transform is server authoritative. So when a network object is owned by one of the player, it is called client authoritative. And you guessed it, when it's owned by the server, it's the other things. Making something server authoritative helps to kind of verify a change that happens in your game. But it can also add some additional lag for the information to move to the server and back to the client. And also, of course, it means that only the server can apply the changes of the network transform to the client. So not a client to the server. So our goal now will be to make this network transform client authoritative. And lucky for us, it's not very complicated to do. We can remove the network transform on all of the body parts and instead add a network transform client. Now on this script, we can simply add a using unity.netcode.components remove the start and the updates. And instead of mono behavior, we want to override the network transform. And to turn this network transform from server authoritative to client authoritative, let's simply do override on is server authoritative. And instead, we want to return false. Beautiful. It was very easy, as you can see. Now, anyway, we can select back the old body parts and redo what we've done previously, which is remove the different scale and now if we go back and that we test our game with two instances. And as you can see now, it seems to work. On the right side, I have both the position of my head that is synchronized and on the left side, it is working as well. So congratulations, we managed to successfully create a network player with synchronized position. But of course, if we ever look at the animation of our hands, there is kind of an issue right there because we can not only control the hands of our own avatar, we can do so with all of the other as well. So of course, what we want is for each player to be able to control their own avatar animation and have it synchronized over the network. So let me show you how we can do this next. Okay, so to synchronize the animation of what network player, it is a bit the same as synchronizing the position of the body part, which is we need to take control of our own animation and share it to the others. Now, currently, if we go to our network players, then on the left end and the right end model, the thing that is responsible to animate the ends is here the animated hand on input that we made together in my tutorial series on how to make a VR game. And as you can see, this is very simple. It basically listens to an input action and will apply it to the animator. But of course, this does not take into consideration if we are the owner 
of this avatar or not. So let's make a script that will copy exactly what this script does, but taking into consideration the ownership. So let's select both our left hand and our right hand model, click on add component and create a network animate hand on input. Now the technique is to simply copy everything that is inside the animate hand on input component and paste it on the network animate hand on input. We need of course to add at the top the same namespace, so using unity engine dot input system. And to cool the ownership, we want to instead of mono behavior add network behavior. So first let's add at the top unity dot netcode and then replace it with network behavior. Now in the update function, let's simply do if is owner and then the rest of the update. Beautiful, and it is as simple as this. Now let's go back to Unity. Okay, so the last thing is now to complete the input action to have the same as this. So for the left hand, we can drag the animator of the left hand on the hand animator. Use reference for both input action. For the pinch, we want it to be the left activate value, which is over there. And for the left grip, you want it to be the left select value. Beautiful. We can now remove the old animated hand on input components. And now let's do the same, but for the right hand. We have now currently set a new network animated hand on input component on both ends, which will take into consideration the ownership of this network player. But of course, like it was the case, we can of course animate our own avatar, but we need to share this update to the other players. And to do so, we can simply add a network animator. But now, of course, some of you might already know the next step. This network animator is server authoritative. So in the same way that we've done previously, let's make it client by removing this component and creating a new network animator client. Now, same thing, let's add a using unity.netcode.components. Let's overwrite a network animator, remove start and update, and instead do override on is server authoritative and return false. And it is as simple as this. Let's go back to Unity, wait for a script to compile. And for left end model, we want to drag the animator of our left end model over there. Do the same for the right end. And now everything should work. We should be able to animate our own local avatar and synchronize its position over the network. But one way to find out, let's build our game and test this. And as you can see, it works. When I animate my own hands over there on one instance of the game, it is seen on the other player. And as you can see, the animation really works great. All of the animation are synchronized on top of the position of our avatar. So everything is working great. And there you go, guys. As you can see, we now manage to easily connect multiple players together and synchronize a beautiful avatar between them with hand animation. Now, I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you did, you can thank me by joining my Patreon. It is now completely free to join the community and be notified about my new free post over there. Thank you for watching and see you soon. Bye bye.